Hello and welcome to CivilNet as we continue to celebrate Reanimania 2013. Joining us is uh, Mary Lise Rebane from Estonia, who does similar work uh, in, in Estonia. Welcome. Thank you for inviting. You're here on a couple of different, wearing a couple of different hats. First of all, you're part of the jury this year. Uh, which categories are you going to be judging? Uh, it's TV and educational competition. Um, and besides that, uh, I'm presenting um, Estonian animation special program uh, created by Animated Dreams Film Festival. Um, <coughs> and you're bringing a couple of filmmakers with you as well. Who's here with you? Yeah, uh, it's uh, Brit Tender, um, Mati Gut and Rao Heidmetz, uh, all our directors uh, who have uh, um, been working on animation <laughs> already, um, already a while. <laughs> Um, we have uh, two big studios, uh, main studios in, in Estonia, uh, Estionis Film and Nuku Film, uh, which are um, focused on artistic animation. So that means that they are not doing commercial work that much. That, uh, it's, um, they have freedom to do their, their own um, like, um, uh, artistic uh, films. So are they mostly short films or are they feature length films? Mostly shorts, uh, but there have been some features and uh, there are going to be more features. Um, and how many projects a year do these two studios produce? In a year, you mean? It depends, but um, like I, I guess it's like uh, two to five uh, films. And are they including uh, uh, shorts for children and... and uh, That's quite a lot. Are they privately funded films or is there public funding as well? Public funding. Okay. You are here because you watch so many animated films during the year as the curator, as the director of the Animated Dreams Film Festival in Estonia. When does that take place? What month and of the year? Uh, it's in the end of, the, in the end of November, uh, so our festival starts next month. It's from uh, 27th November to 1st December. And uh, Animated Dreams Film Festival is a sub-festival of Tallinn Black Knights Film Festival, which is a feature film festival. Um, and so what kind of uh, projects uh, do you focus on in your Animated Dreams? International scope? Are there submissions from around the world? Are they mostly European films? Uh, we take submissions from all over the world. Uh, we receive um, more than 500 submissions a year. So it's basically this, uh, uh, about the same amount that Reanimania uh, Festival uh, receives the, the number of submissions. Um, mostly from Europe, but, um, uh, but uh, we run special screenings besides international competition. We have student, um, best of international student animation. Every year we focus on different region or different country. This year it's uh, Canada and Canadian animation, uh, presenting contemporary Canadian animation from National Film Board of Canada. We have a jury member from Canada. And what's the website for the film festival if somebody wants to find out and plan for next November to come to, ta uh, to Estonia to watch these films? It's uh, www anima.ee Okay, and of course Google search will bring you that result. Mary Lise, um, when you're watching so many different artists um, ranging in technique to storylines to the whole approach of storytelling, what does someone like you look for? I mean, how do you know if an animated film is worthy of screening to your public and to your audiences? Mm -hmm. Well, first of all, um, I try to be as uh, objective as I can uh, to, um, to select films that present um, different ways of thinking and uh, handling the subjects, different subjects, uh, to, to get the widest range, uh, range of, uh, of um, uh, stories um, as possible. Uh, so within the framework of all the submissions of one year, you try to look for different varieties of stories. It's it's, it's story that matters. It's it's of course we try to like um, we are 
very much selecting artistic uh, films. That means that like 3D and computer animation usually um, stays behind. I mean, it's not because it's not because it's not good, but just that we want to uh, focus on independent and artistic animation, uh, which which you can see only maybe at festivals. So, um, but it's. Um, well, the techniques give you so much, many opportunities to express yourself. That, that's one of the reasons I like animation, because you can like, express with pictures so much more than with live action. It's like you have so many um, layers when you're working with animation. So it's, it's for me, I appreciate when, when directors can um, make the story and uh, visual style um, come together, that the visual style supports the story behind it. So. Last year, uh, from your film festival, who were the big stars for you? Um, what were the films that spoke to your heart and also uh, spoke to the audiences? We had... Um, mm, um, w one of our guests was Igor Kovalyov from, uh, from Russia, who has been uh, working in the United States uh, also. Uh, quite a long time. Well, um, he was one of the, um, maybe one of the, um, uh, the biggest stars of the festival because the, their visual style with um, Brit Bern, who is uh, one of the most appreciated um, uh, animation directors, is, is quite the same or similar and they, uh, he has um, he says that he's been pretty much influenced by, by Preet Pan. So that um, catched the audience's um, attention, his uh, presence uh, at our festival. Um, but I think um, there's the thing about uh, festivals or short film programs is that you can't maybe, that people um, have different tastes mm -hmm. and it's not about selecting one film or taking it like highlighting one director or well, one film it's about um, the collage of, of, of films uh, that everyone can choose their own favorite and uh, there are definitely films that you you watch and or you see and you think that it's not for me <laughs> and then you find your, your Favorite. So obviously, still the the dominant uh, Russian culture, the strong studios that have that came out uh, in Russia, still have an influence in the tastes in Estonia as they do here in Armenia. Do you think there are similarities in the kind of art we're creating? You mentioned Reanimania and and uh, Animated Dreams have similar turnout and similar size. Do are the works here and the works being produced in your country are there similarities in themes or styles? First of all, I don't think that we still do have this uh, Russian and Estonian um, um, kind of influences. I think it's it's still Estonian animation is still it still has these Soviet um, influences, but it still has managed to to like um, uh, come up with its own identity. It's it's not like post post Soviet um, style <laughs> that we should call it, but um, but to be honest, I'd like to um, learn more about Armenian animation. Um, as I understood, there is no such um, um, such um, funding uh, for the studios like we do have in uh, in Estonia that that artistic studios get. Um, frequent um, funding by 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 the state or by the city or, or, or uh, from public money. So that would obviously change the game if there was funding, it'd motivate more people to try their hand and, and lobby for their projects. Um, what are the challenges globally with animation, uh, with the advent of computers and all this technology? Are there is there more opportunity or is there more competition? Uh, do artists have the same chances as they did before or less? 
Well, that's a difficult question. <laughs> it's, I mean, of course, the um, um, development of technical um, possibilities um, brings a big change in, in animation world as well. But um, I think it's it doesn't really um, doesn't really influence the artistic animation in the sense that. Uh, 3D and computer animation are more still used in commercial projects and there are still people who want to work with their hands to do um, like painted animation and computer is just like um, like a helpful hand <laughs> to like do all the post-production and but there are still many many people who it's so time-consuming, I mean, animation. Um, and computers uh, offer the opportunity to, to make it easier. Um, but, but I think it's... I think artistic animation will not um, vanish anywhere. <laughs> now, you've had your hands on animated films. You've studied animation. How early in life, uh, when you were watching cartoons as a kid, as we all do, when did you start thinking about the possibility of you doing hands-on creating animation? Actually I wasn't, um, when I was a kid I wasn't like that much into cartoons or anything. The, the idea uh, to go to study animation came from, from, um, um, from that that um, I wanted to, I, I liked film films and filmmaking and I've always liked done several time, uh, several things at one time, like multitasking. So what interested me was um, that you can bring music, uh, script writing and artistic style, like painting or, or puppets, puppet making into one, uh, into one um, work masterpiece. Of art. Yes, <laughs> work of art, exactly. So, so, and, and Animation, usually independent animators or film directors um, um, have to do the, have to work on their projects mostly alone or they have, they're working in small teams. So that's, that's also maybe important for me that uh, maybe I didn't or I don't like working in really like small, big, uh, big groups with, with uh, it's so res full of res responsibility to work, uh, like in, in feature films. I mean, you have like so many people, so big team. So I like like working alone or with small groups and and using um, musicians and putting all these little details together. And now you have to work with a lot of big groups because of your job as the program director at Animated Dreams. Um, talk to us about how what you see you know you mentioned funding public funding that would help grow the arts here in Armenia how can we improve our animation festival here where do you see us uh, changing we had had these discussions also in our, our team or in, in in Estonia that where to go next when I mean that every festival wants every festival wants to go uh, to grow bigger to get more attention and I think um, it's maybe the main um, purpose uh, shouldn't be uh, to go to grow um, big. I mean, it's 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 good to get attention, uh, but to like keep the sustainability for a festival. I mean, in that sense. We are quite similar with Armenia, that both we are both small countries. I think the um, audience uh, number is about the same. That um, you can't, you can't uh, maybe convince all people to come to cinema to see animation. But there, there at one point there uh, comes a limit uh, where you can't reach like everyone. It's still that everyone has different, uh, you know. Uh, interests, but uh, I think Reanimania is doing a great job. It's like um, 
it's uh, it's uh, it's Rianne Mania's uh, fifth birthday, and I think this is now the point where you established yourself as a festival, and the the big times are still like are 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 in, are <laughs> hard to say. The big times will come for the festival. And I'm, I'm sure it will be even better and better and bringing people here. Uh, everyone's been so, um, so um, uh, pleased with the hospitality here and like, the festival's done a great job. And we're fortunate to have you and, and have you bring your experience and your knowledge and uh, joining the jury and talking to us and meeting young animators. Mary Lise Rabane from Estonia, director of the programs for the Animated Dreams program, thank you very much. Thank you for inviting me. All right, thank you at home for joining us on CivilNet as we celebrate Reanimania 2013.